beautiful people. It's Friday, so let's talk. Today I want to cover a subject that is um, important to me, but I'm going to try and stay on topic and not be emotional about it because I can get a little uh, tense about it. So I'll try to stay on topic, um, stay on point, and uh, not make this an emotional soapbox type thing. I got notes. Tell myself stay on point. Today I want to talk about car seats. Um, yeah, let's go straight to the notes. Um, uh, first thing about car seats you might want to know is when a lot of new parents go to get their first car seat, um, they're kind of stuck between whether getting a new one or a used one. Um, if you get a used one, that's great. Um, there are multiple options from car seats that just, um, are made just for newborns and small babies to some that convert all the way up to toddler. Um, they do get astronomically expensive, but you get more um, depending on how much you spent. Like the one that we bought for our, our oldest went from newborn all the way up to uh, when she ends up forward facing. So she basically won't ever need another car seat. And it ran us about $200. Um, Thankfully, we managed to come show up on a day at Babies R Us where they were doing a trade-in. So we traded in the car seat that was given to us for that. So it was really, really cool. It ended up like equaling out till we didn't have to pay for one. Um, but if you get a used car seat, um, like we had initially, someone gave us a car seat. Um, be sure to look up the user manual online for that car seat. You can find the model number for the car seat on the bottom and also look for the date, the expiration date on the car seat. Yes. Car seats have expiration dates. Um, so look on the bottle, on the bottle, on the bottom to find the um, model number and to find out the expiration date for that car seat. And if you are purchasing it from a previous owner, please make sure that that car seat has never been in an accident before. Um, if the car seat has been in an accident, it is no good. If it's past its expiration date, it is also no good. Look for another one. So if you're thrift storing, looking for, um, a car seat you need to check for those two things um, if you buy it and it's not expired more than 99.9% .9 of the time if you put in the model number into Google you will find the user manual for that that was uh, something I learned the first week home um, the extras the little things that you can buy at Walmart and Target and Babies R Us the little pads and all kinds of good extraness to go in the car seats they are not recommended by the car seat manufacturer unless that product is specifically made to be an add-on for that specific car seat they are not considered safe because they've not been crash tested for your specific car seat so yes they're cute yes they're convenient but if you're going to buy the extra look for the extras that are specifically made for the exact car seat that you have because those products have been crash tested for that car seat, okay? Anything extra can actually interfere with the um, the mechanics of that, of the car seat you have and make it not um, perform as effectively in a crash situation, okay? So you want that thing to be perfect in a crash situation and you don't want that cute little thing that you put in there that has a giraffe on it to interfere with that, okay? Um, local resources, if you find that the car seat thing is too expensive, like you just can't get the money for it, every city just about has some sort of local resource um, that can even get you free car seats if you need it. Um, I'll try to link a few down below, um, just kind of like overall in general, but you will need to research um, beforehand to see if your city has any local resources, um, different charities and things that deal with moms and dads and new parents that may actually get you a car seat for free if that's what you need. There's no reason not to have a car seat. That option is out there somewhere. You just may need a little help finding it. Um, if you are not sure, like you're just putting in your car seat and you're not absolutely sure that it's installed correctly, most cities, you can go to your local fire station and they will check to see if your car seat is installed correctly. So make a little adventure out of it. You get to meet some fire firemen, go to the fire station and let them check and make sure that all the buckles and everything are done. In the past, I, I assumed that most hospitals make you, um, are supposed to check in, make sure your car seat is safe before they let you leave the hospital. I had two babies at the same hospital and neither time was my car seat checked. And the first time it absolutely should have been because we did not have my daughter in, our car, in her car seat correctly. 
So make sure that someone checks your car seat, someone of official parenting status or have some sort of credentials to let you know whether that car seat is installed correctly. Um, um, you can look at your car's user manual and it will tell you where your car seat car seat should be sitting in order for it to be safest. Some cars want it to be behind the driver's seat, others the passengers, others the middle. So your car um, has been crash tested and whatever your car says your car seat needs to be, that is the safest place for that car seat to be. It may not be the most convenient, but it is the safest. So check your individual vehicles, user manuals for the car seat section. Um, almost all car seats universally um, have a chest belt Okay, they have the buckle, the buckle, and the chest belt. Okay, almost all car seats universally, I've not seen a different one, um, the car seat chest belt needs to be at armpit height. The belt needs to, the little click, click your thing, needs to line up with their armpit. If it is too low or too high, it causes different dangers for them in a crash situation or even in general. Too high, it can be choking. Too low, if you're in a crash, it can hurt their internal organs. So it is placed at that point because of the strength of that portion of their body. Any higher, any lower, it's not good. Make sure every single time you put your kid in the car seat that they are buckled in correctly. That is what the user manual, user manual is for. It will tell you where your buckles need to be. And um, like I said, even if it's even if somebody gives you an old car seat, look up that user manual and find out how you're supposed to strap your baby in safely. Okay, and do it every single time. Uh, back to the to the notes. Um, Every state has different laws about rear-facing and forward-facing your child. And this is where I won't get on my soapbox. I'll stick to the point. Look up your state's laws about when it is time to forward-face your child. Even the, the car seats themselves have, with their booklets, with their user manuals, when they suggest that you forward-face your child. Now, I believe for most of them, it's their second birthday and 35 pounds, whichever comes first, whether they hit 35 pounds or it's their first or second birthday. Forgive me, I, I don't know because we kind of threw that out the window. But um, because by my kid's second birthday, she's nowhere near 35 pounds. So it's just like, anyway, um, look for the 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 weight and, and age requirements for your specific car seat and then look for the weight and age requirements for your state because it changes state to state. Now in the past, I believe, I'm gonna stick with that two years, 35 pounds thing, has pretty much been kind of the standard. So everybody like for their first or second birthday, they just re turn their kid around and they begin forward facing. Um, states are changing those laws as we speak, basically. Um, where after more crash tests are being done, they're realizing that forward facing is not the safest way to, um, transport your child. So the laws are being changed to you keep your child rear facing as long as possible. So basically until you cannot rear face them anymore, you keep them rear facing simply because it is the safest way to transport your child. Okay. Now that is going to be a personal choice, whether you stick with exactly what the user manual says, exactly what your state says, or what you feel is best for your child. Some kids are really big and they're really long and they're uncomfortable really soon. Um, some of them are going to say tiny like mine is, and she's going to be rear face until she's 35 okay so um that's gonna be a personal choice but please look up the local laws for your state and go by the user manual that comes through comes with your car seat and make an informed decision about when you turn your child to forward facing not an emotional decision about when you want your child to forward face because if your reason for forward facing your child is simply so they can see more that's not a good reason, okay? It just simply isn't. My kid, it's, it, a lot of people think, oh, well, they're missing out on things. My kid's missing out on the beach. She's never been, but she doesn't know that because she's never been. So if she's not pouting in the back about a beach she's never been to. Your child has no idea that they're missing out on things because they don't know. They've never seen it. Only you know that, okay? So don't turn your child forward facing because you feel like they're missing out on something. Do it because you feel like it is safe to do so. And last thing, now that I bring myself back. Um, a car seat is not an, is not an accessory. It is 
a safety device. They're cute, they have patterns on them, they're cool looking, they have cup holders and all kinds of things going on that make them cool to look at, but they are not an accessory. They are not a cute little binky, it's not a bib. It is a harness to keep your child safe as safe as possible in a vehicle. Just like your seat belt, they just have a very complicated one. So as cute as it is, remember that it is a safety device. So it's not, car seats aren't really about personal preference as far as what you decide to and not to do with it. Um, I hope that comes across well. Um, like it's not about, oh, I feel like putting the belt a little lower or a little higher or a little lower. Like it's not about that. It's a safety device. So if you do not use it properly, it will not do its job, okay? Um, oh, I forgot something else. Um, and like in the winter time, um, putting thick coats on your children in their car seat is not good because their coats um, create uh, visually, it makes it look like their seat belt is tight on them, but it's actually a lot of empty space. In a crash, their coats compress and that two inches um, that's in between their coat and their body now is compressed and it can um, lead to ejection from car seats. There's all kinds of things. So I'll try not to try not to go off, but um, just remember that it is a safety device. It is a safety device. It's a safety device. If you do not follow the instructions for that safety device, it cannot do its job, no matter how cute it is. Okay. So car seats, it's safety first, your child's safety first, your child's safety is number one. That's the point of the car seat in the first place. If you're not going to use the car seat right, you might as well just buckle them in with a seat belt and go on about your business because it can't do its job if you're not going to let it. Okay. Um, yeah. And then they're cute. You can get some with cup holders and little giraffes and stuff all over it. Anyway, car seats. Um, I hope this was helpful in a little, in some way. I'm trying not to rant, I promise. Um, and my last po point, sorry, this video is kind of long, um, is when, if you are a mom like me, who is like really set on car seat safety, be kind. There, there are ways to tell people that their car seat isn't safe. Um, the first way I was informed that my eldest daughter was not safely put into her car seat was not in a loving way. And it's the first mom scar that I have. Like it felt like I haven't even had this girl home for 24 hours and I put her in mortal danger. Um, I didn't know to look up, um, the user manual for my car seat. I didn't know that it was given to me. So it didn't come in a box. It was just, Hey, here's a car seat. I didn't know it had expiration dates. I didn't know to ask, had this car seat ever been in a wreck? And I didn't know where the chest belt was supposed to go. So we posted a picture of my daughter in her car seat. And somebody's like, wow, that's dangerous. You need to look up the user manual. And I cried for hours. I made my husband take the picture down. There are ways to approach moms about car seat safety. You need to do it in as loving way as possible. And you don't need to put them on blast on social media in front of everybody. Send them a private message, send them a text, send them a phone call, kindly show them how to do it, but do it in love. Remember moms are, and dads are already under so much pressure as it is. Don't make it worse. Be kind, be kind, be kind, be kind. It's all about safety for the baby. Everybody wants their babies to be safe. So approach it that way. Okay. All right, that's our Friday, that's our talk. I'm gonna let the subject go. <laughs> and next Friday, we'll talk about something else. And Monday, I will see you for a mommy moment. This Wednesday, I will do a wife Wednesday. I'm on that, it's gonna happen. Um, I hope this has been helpful. If you had your baby this week, congratulations. If you're looking for your baby to come this weekend, um, I'm excited for you. And it's adventures and adventures and adventures after that. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and I will see you on Monday. Bye guys.